Maybe you remember when you were vaccinated as a child. Those vaccines protected you from dangerous diseases. You may even trust vaccines overall, but jumping in line to get one of the COVID-19 vaccines? You think you might wait. After all, how could they have tested it thoroughly in so short a time? No vaccine has ever been approved for widespread use so quickly. Well, it's true that as time goes on, more and more people will get the vaccine and will essentially act as additional testers of vaccine safety. But do you realize how well tested and safe vaccines are before they're released? In most countries, even if the process may seem hurried, COVID-19 vaccines are going through all of the testing phases they would be normally before being approved. Even though some vaccine scientists had special allowances to move forward before that, in most countries, they've refused to do so before the final major phase of testing is completed for each vaccine that gains approval. So what exactly are those phases? And how many people were these vaccines tested on before they were approved? Let's take a look. Before vaccines are ever tested on humans, they're tested in the lab using cells. If they activate immune cells and don't harm the cells, then they can be tested on animals like mice and monkeys. During this preclinical stage, some ingredients may be added that make the vaccine work better. Once researchers have a vaccine that has passed these preclinical tests, they can start testing the vaccine candidate on people. First, they start small, in phase one clinical trials, with a group of about 20 to 80 people who have agreed to test the vaccine. Smaller test groups may get different doses of the vaccine to see if different amounts might work better. In clinical trials, some of the people get the vaccine and the others get a treatment that won't activate their immune systems, like salt water or saline. This is called a placebo. If phase one goes well, a larger group of people are tested, usually several hundred, to make sure the vaccine is safe in a more diverse group. These are phase two trials. Different doses and timing of booster shots may also be tested in these trials. If phase two goes well, an even larger group of people are tested, with thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people in phase three trials. These tests make sure the vaccine works well and that it is safe for an even more diverse group than in phase two. If phase three goes well, the vaccine may be approved for widespread use. Phase three trials also give researchers the chance to measure the efficacy of a vaccine. Efficacy, which is a word used a lot when talking about clinical trials, is the ability to produce a result that you want. In the case of a vaccine, Efficacy is measured through a comparison of how many people get sick in each test group, whether they receive the vaccine or the placebo. For example, in phase three clinical trials of the Moderna mRNA vaccine for COVID-19, of 30,000 people, 196 had symptomatic confirmed cases of COVID-19. Of those people, 185, or about 94%, were in the group that had received the placebo. Of the people who received the vaccine, only 11, or about 6%, had confirmed COVID. This means the vaccine is 94% efficacious. Health issues were also not increased among the 15,000 or so people who received the vaccine, showing that it's a safe preventative treatment. The very similar Pfizer mRNA vaccine was tested in over 43,000 different people. Again, the efficacy was high, 95% and concerning health issues were not increased among the over 21,000 people who received that vaccine. To see how effective they are in the real world and in protecting asymptomatic people, all the vaccines will continue to be studied as they're distributed. These ongoing studies are sometimes referred to as phase four clinical trials. For example, in phase four, we've seen that a small portion of the population, about one in 100,000 vaccinated people, have severe allergic reactions to the mRNA vaccines. For this reason, it's recommended that people who are allergic to any of the vaccine ingredients do not get vaccinated with that type of vaccine. If someone has a severe reaction to the first dose of the vaccine, they should not receive the second dose. Even after approval, vaccines are constantly being studied to make sure they are effective and safe. It's also important to keep in mind that scientists and doctors have been working together to develop vaccines since the late 1700s. The basis for the science isn't new by any means. We've been experimenting, honing, and refining vaccine science for hundreds of years. Vaccines are a generally safe way to help your body prepare to fight COVID-19, but we shouldn't rely on them alone. Current vaccines are close to 100% effective at preventing severe symptoms of COVID-19, but a few things are still unclear. We don't know yet if people who are vaccinated can still spread COVID-19, even if they're not sick themselves. It's possible the vaccine may prevent disease, but not stop the virus from infecting the body. 
That means people who have been vaccinated may still be able to spread the virus. More studies are needed to figure out this part of the puzzle. So even after you get a vaccine, until the pandemic is considered over, we all need to help keep wearing masks, keep socially distancing, and keep washing our hands. Let's help protect each other until we can vaccinate billions of people across the globe. Learn more about vaccine history, design, testing, and the importance of this beneficial technology and our companion story, Vaccine Science. Check the video description for the link. And if you want to run simulations to see how the vaccines can help slow or stop the pandemic, check out our COVID simulator.